And so basically when we got this GPS, it just runs on magic. Didn't even have to plug it in, I think. But uh, somehow but that's, that's when it we just cleaned putting. us up. Yeah. I cleaned agree with that 100%. I went on a driving tour to uh, the Badlands and the Black Ooh, Hills the just Badlands recently. Badlands yeah. awesome. Beautiful. Yeah. But the only tension that we had on that trip was directions yeah, yeah. And, and yeah especially when you're lost and you're supposed to be at the venue like 45 minutes ago and you're just kind of right. like yeah and so i have a this. really small bladder which makes it so i have to stop for the bathroom so usually i mean typically you would think kim she's the smaller and whatever but you know it's me every well i learned how to pee in a bottle and that, basically that that's the only reason so why we get time. anywhere ever Garmin and the bottle. Yeah, the there bottle you go. is very important. That does it. Now, you guys are from Brooklyn. That's where you live now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, I, I put together a show the night before Pitchfork on Thursday night, like a Pitchfork preview show. And I realized how many bands actually live in Brooklyn, that this is sort of like a Brooklyn festival. You know, there, there's a, more than a handful of bands. Yeah. Uh, what's it like living in Brooklyn and playing? Is it a community where everybody knows each other or... The, the funny thing is, is, you know, a lot of people will meet on the road. They're like, oh, you're from Brooklyn. I have a friend's band who plays in Brooklyn. But, you know, we have our group that we hang out with and mm -hmm. we play with and, you know, go to the shows that, that we would hang out at. But, you know, yeah. Usually There's the answer so is no. Bands. We yeah. don't yeah. know so your band. The thing is, this is, this is the thing. It's that, okay, we in the practice complex that we have a space in there's probably a couple hundred couple hundred other bands in this one complex and there's dozens of these complexes just in Brooklyn and like just the sheer volume of bands I feel like is the thing you know I mean the thing you have to understand Brooklyn is the fourth largest city in the U.S. by itself, aside from Manhattan, aside from New right. York That's city. one thing you forget about. You think of it, Brooklyn as a neighborhood, yeah. But it's not. It's a huge city, right? Yeah. yeah. So like, I feel it's just the sheer number of bands makes it so that there have to be a couple that pull ahead. <laughs> pull ahead. Yeah. Well, what, what's the attractive thing for uh, for people coming from outside of New York and ending up in Brooklyn? Is it uh, the practice space that there are a lot of practice spaces? Is it still cheap to live there? Oh, no, it's no. not cheap at all. It's a fortune. Um, I mean, we ended up there because we both went to school there and we really loved it. And, uh, you know, I grew up in Vermont, very rural area. Um, Kim grew up in Rhode Island. In, in Providence, Providence, which I feel like Brooklyn feels like a larger mm -hmm. Providence. That's why I really yeah. liked it when, when I first moved there. But yeah. the one thing that is does happen in New York, and my brother who went to school in Boston and whatnot, there can be dozens of shows of a similar demographic of music. Like the same audience would want to go to like these shows or like, you know, there could be, you know, seven big shows in one night and still all be packed. And wow. he talked about in Boston, if there was two shows of the same audience, that means someone messed up. You know, it was like, it doesn't happen. And I remember his, one of his first days in New York, there was two block parties happening in Williamsburg, five blocks away from each other. And one was like, yeah, yeah, yes. And the other one was like, chick, 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 and a lightning bolt. Like, he's like, these are both happening on the same day, like five blocks away from each other, and they're both packed. It's yeah. like, it's just big enough that when Kim and I started, we could play four shows a week to like different people you know in our neighborhood you know so yeah. i think well, so talking about brooklyn like that and your new album called grand you didn't record that in brooklyn at all you actually recorded it we had to get away we had to try to be far from the distractions of brooklyn and also just be somewhere where we didn't have to pay for it so we went to my parents house in vermont in the middle of three cow pastures recorded in the bedroom i grew up in still with all skateboarding posters on the wall and stuff like that um and kim lost her mind after about six weeks she couldn't for handle anything, it anything for any excitement like we we drove to the grocery store which Oof. is a half an hour away big, and big that excitement. was like woo, we're out um yeah i don't i don't know how you did it yeah, I was there for 18 years. I lost my yeah. mind a long time ago. Well, how, um, how were your parents during uh, the the recording of the they, record? They're awesome. I mean, they're, so awesome. They're very supportive. Yeah. Like, you know, I remember when I was like 14 and we moved a drum set up to that bedroom. I, they were a little nervous about the racket, but the, but you know, we were respectful. We we worked as they were at. They went to work in the day and we did the quiet stuff at night. Like, yeah. uh, oh, Matt and Kim are up there making their record. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think on one one of the tracks you can slightly hear Matt's mom yelling up that she's home because yep. we were doing. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. No, right after it ends, one of them I forget which one it is, but I was like, "Hey, I'm home," and then like the track stops. Yeah. I, you have to listen for the subliminal. But actually, we ended up recording 
for another seven months after those initial six weeks we would be on tour and we'd come back for a week or two and we'd work at our apartment mostly or a practice space yeah. in brooklyn you know driving our neighbors crazy screaming right. at the top of our lungs and well, that's a long time to be making a record that's uh, like epic yeah, well, it was a baby, really. Nine yeah. months in the womb till that puppy popped out. Well, there you go. That's yeah. It's easy for both of you. The thing <laughs> was is that we tour all the time, and we took six weeks off to write mm-hmm. or to record, and we weren't done yet. So we'd have to leave again, and then like just trying to squeeze it in whenever we could. But the thing is, while some bands when they work those kind of lengths on an album they just overdo it and ruin it you know you you, you've heard the band that went and made their first album super quick it had that energy had that rawness they went in the big budget or whatever and recorded forever and they just made this epic piece of crap you know but the thing that we had was we kept leaving for a month at a time and we'd revisit and be like "Ooh, what were we thinking there cut that all out or this needs a little so it kept giving us fresh perspective. Well, the sound of the record is really consistent, and if you spent that much time leaving and coming back and doing it sporadically, that's uh, that's pretty much of a triumph to be able to have that consistency of sound all the way through it. I'll call it an accident, you know. <laughs> well, obviously, you guys don't take up a lot of space when you're uh, playing your music. You know, if you can record it in a bedroom, uh, but when you take it to a stage, especially a larger stage at a festival like here at Pitchfork. Um, do you, is it, how, how does that translate for you guys to play in such a big space like that? I remember our first festival being nervous about this. We Our first festival we ever played was a, one called Siren Festival in at Coney Island in New York. And having a barricade, you know, 30 feet out in front of you, and at the time we wouldn't play a room deeper than 30 feet. You right. know, we'd play like some art space or whatever. And like, man, this is gonna be weird. But we just do what we do. You know, the same as if it was any other space. We just like are ourselves, you know, are, uh, kind of you know I'm falling off my seat half the time yeah. and like we just you know put all of our energy into it and it really seemed to translate I mean the feedback was just I couldn't have expected it and, yeah, well, and ever since it's the it's enthusiasm just, that you guys bring to your show you know yeah. certainly bridges that uh, the, the photo pit <laughs> and, and, uh, and the audiences always have a great time so we're certainly looking forward to your show awesome. I'm looking forward Pitchfork. to playing. it's coming up yeah I hear where I hear we're on the party stage yeah, like, that's what we're they on told the, us. The, uh, the, not one of these two that are right, right here. We're on the smaller the, stage over there. The yeah. third one in the back. Yeah. And we just hear it, that, that's whatever, anything goes at the party stage. We Every, like any, that. Anything goes at the party <laughs> stage. I saw King Khan and the Shrines there last year. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's the kind of stage where the audience is really close to you. It's not, there's not as big a gap yeah. between yeah. you and the audience at this stage. But uh, congratulations on the record. Also, congratulations on, I don't know if, I guess congratulations would be in order. I was sitting at home watching TV, watching the Bacardi spot comes yeah. on. I'm like, what song is this? I know this song. Oh my God, it's Matt and Kim. Yeah. No, it was. It was the song Daylight. Yeah. And, you know, and but I appreciate it because we were nervous. You know, you connect with anything and you expect maybe to have some backlash. But we have gotten most like, congratulations. That's really awesome that, you know, just to that uh, one places playing music I like this is someone telling me that you know yeah and 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 be that kind of exposure we didn't even realize what would happen you know and then our album six months after it comes out goes into the billboard charts and things like that and, well know, what I like about it is that uh, the show that I do I, I introduce a lot of new music and I play a lot of stuff that's really unfamiliar to people and then it almost validates my show <laughs> when it comes yeah. back on a camera like oh my god <laughs> I found that a long time yeah, ago. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, anyway, uh, congratulations on all that, and have a great show, and thanks a lot for stopping by. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks so much. Sure. Nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah. yeah.